Mr. Tegmeyer here with part two of calculating truss forces. So remember in part one, we took a look at the static determinacy of a truss. In other words, we looked at can we solve the darn thing or can't we? We're assuming that, that we can solve it. It is statically determinant. If so, then we move on to our next step. And our next step is to determine what the reaction forces are. We've already done this a little bit, so hopefully this is review. Let's get started. So remember when we're looking at reaction forces, we have three equations. First one is sum of the moments, and we always want to use this one first. The sum of the moments about any given point is zero. And it's important that we pick the right point. You should always pick the point that has the most reaction forces if at all possible. You don't have to do that but it sure makes life a lot easier. So remember a moment is a force times a distance and we want to look at uh, clockwise and counterclockwise and we'll go over that in the next few slides. And then one of the other equations we can use we want to look at all of the forces that are acting horizontally or in the x direction and I always like to look at things and make them easy. And so what I have always been taught is that X pointing in the right direction is positive. X pointing to the left is negative. And there's really no reason uh, for what we're going to show in the coming example to use anything different. And finally, our third equation and last equation is the sum of the forces in the y direction. So we want to look at all of the forces, reaction forces and applied forces that are either pointing up or pointing down. And just like in the uh, what we said with the x direction or horizontal, I always want to make things easy. And what I know is that if it points up, that's the positive y direction. And if it points down, that's the negative. So that's how we're going to consider things in the following example. So here we have a simple truss and you can see that on the left hand side at node A or joint A uh, that we have a pinned reaction. So we have RA sub Y pointing up and we have R sub AX pointing to the right. Both are positive. It might turn out that one of them is negative, but that's okay. We'll let the math tell us that. And then at node C, or joint C, we had a roller. And we know that because it only has one support, and that points up. So the first equation we always want to use is the sum of the moments. And we're going to actually find the sum of the moments about RCY or to find RCY. But one of the things we want to remember is that uh, what is a positive moment and what is a negative moment. So pay special attention to what just popped up on your screen. If something is clockwise, it is negative. If something is going counterclockwise, it is positive. So let's take a closer look at this So what's going on here. So we're going to take our moments about point A. That's what this subscript tells us here. So we're going to take our moments about this. And again, the reason we want to do that is if we take our moments about point A, the reaction force RAY and RAX are zero. They have no bearing whatsoever on the moments about A. So let's take a look at that. Well, we have F at D pointing down and its perpendicular distance is 3 feet. So we have FD times 3 feet. That's negative because it goes counterclockwise about A. And then we have RCY times 10 feet. Well, when we plug in FD, we know what that is. It's 500. And we multiply that out. We do some algebra. We find that the reaction force at C in the Y direction is 150 pounds. Please make sure to put your units in so that you know that they cancel. Could we use inches here? We could, but it's given to us, the dimensions are given to us in feet, so let's not change that. So now the next equation we're going to use, because we've already used one, 
a sum of our moments. The next one we're going to use in this example, we're going to sum the forces in the y direction. So we write our equation. We put in what we know. FD is pointing down, so it is negative. RCY is positive because it is pointing up. And our AY, we don't really know. We have it pointing up, so let's find out if that's true. Let's plug in our numbers. FD is 500 pointing down, it's negative. We calculated on the last slide that RCY is 150 pounds up, and so our only unknown then is RAY. When we do the math, we find then that RAY is 350 pounds. It's positive, which means our arrow pointing up is correct. One more to go. So we're going to sum our forces now using our last equation. We've used some of the moments. We've used some of the forces in the y direction. Now let's look in the x direction or horizontal. So here I have my free body diagram with all my known values now. So I know that RAY is 350. I know that RCY is 150. And I'm given my load of 500 pounds. So Let's apply our equation, and since we only have one force in the x direction, we know that RAX equals zero, and that totally makes sense.